Last year, dispatches revealed a message of hatred and intolerance in some of Britain's most mainstream mosques. We Muslims have been ordered to do brainwashing. An ideology with its roots in Saudi Arabia. The pinnacle, the crest, the summit of Islam is jihad. But the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia said it was not responsible. And Britain's most important mosque promised vigilance against extremism. So we've gone back undercover to see what message they're promoting now. The one who changed his uh, deal, what we're going to do? Keep. Keep. The last day will not come until the Muslims fight the Jews and kill them. Our reporter, a Muslim herself, is going undercover in the most important and influential mosque in the country. London's Central Mosque, an Islamic cultural centre, usually known as Regent's Park Mosque, says it promotes tolerance and interfaith. We featured it in last year's dispatches, and the mosque promised to crack down on anyone promoting extremism on its premises. So she's going back to find out if they've been true to their word. Women aren't allowed in the main hall, so she's directed upstairs to the main women's section on a large balcony overlooking the hall. Hundreds of women and children come here to pray every day. Then the congregation gathers in a large circle. The teacher today is Um Amira. She says she's teaching from a book by Sheikh Fazan, a senior member of the official Saudi religious establishment. This is very, very good. She starts with a revision session on what should happen to people who break Islamic laws, including Muslims who convert to another faith. But he's Muslim and he gets out of Islam. He doesn't want any more. What are we going to do? Kill. Kill. You understand? We're talking about Islam. Yeah? It's the same for adulterers. For the head, had the zina, what is the law of this? Until he died. And the one who is not married, he yeah, never died. Now, with 100 The worshippers, many of whom are children or teenagers, are being taught the Saudi Arabian interpretation of Sharia law from official Saudi books. The teachings include the brutal killings of homosexuals and women who act like men. If someone makes them seem like a, a man, a woman like a man, they understand this, the punishment is kill. Kill them from the highest uh, place. I'm not going to be like animals, living like animals. Or to be like the people of Lut, we have to take the head, the head is to kill them. This causes a brief debate among the young students. One girl says they should also be stoned. Another student says the punishment is approved by the Quran. Yeah. Then we reduced him to the lowest of the low. So if you throw someone up a mountain, you are reducing him to the lowest of the low because they're falling off from a high thing. In fact, punishments like throwing homosexuals from a mountain are nowhere mentioned in the Quran. It's a hardline interpretation taught in Saudi Arabia. Um Amira condemns terrorism and says these punishments will only be carried out in a future Islamic state under a Muslim leader, not in present-day Britain. This fundamentalist interpretation of Islam is being taught in Britain's most important and supposedly moderate mosque. Our reporter finds out where Umar Mira has been trained. She says she's just finished three years of study at Medina Mosque in Saudi Arabia. It's the second most holy mosque in Islam, and its imams teach Muslims an interpretation of the faith known to some as Wahhabism. Umar Mira teaches what she says is an important principle in Islam. A Muslim must hate as well as love. It's not enough that you worship Allah, we have to also, uh, in our heart, uh, hate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala If 
pleased to Allah and love what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She says this principle relates to living with non-Muslims. You have to hate what is pleased to Allah, especially when living with this country that's non-Muslim. And asks the worshipper to read out a verse from the Quran. Stand up and hate peace. Which she says is about relations between Muslims and non-Muslims. Verily, we are free from you, and whatever you worship besides Allah, we have rejected you, and there has appeared between us and you hostility and hatred forever until you believe in Allah alone. Uma Mira says it means Muslims must separate from non-Muslims. You understand, sister? Islam is the development of shirk. The shirk and the ahli, the people who do the shirk. Any questions? After the lesson, our reporter approaches Amira to ask her to clarify her teaching. You know, when we talked about the, the love and enmity for Allah, how, how do we apply that? How is a Muslim do I apply that? Yeah. Muslims should show good manners to non-Muslims and can try to convert them to Islam, but cannot befriend them. She uses the Arabic term kafir, meaning disbeliever or infidel. To go be good, good friend, uh, give them all about our secret, you know. Understand? You have to be friend with them. That is not allowed. Because mm -hmm. is only to Muslim, not to the Umar Mira says she's learned this doctrine of separatism in Saudi Arabia, whose clerics preach a brand of Islam often called Wahhabism. Wahhabism is opposed to the diverse and tolerant traditions of classical Islam according to moderate British Muslims like Sheikh Musa Admani, an imam who's advised the government on Islam. The Saudi Wahhabi worldview is very narrow. It's extremely intolerant. This extreme intolerance comes out of seeing non-Muslims as basically non-human. Intolerance, hatred, dislike, this is a not Islamic teaching at all. Separating from disbelievers is the official theology of the Saudi state, according to Saudi academic Professor Madawi al-Rashid. The Saudi religious uh, scholars uh, adopt a very strict and radical um, interpretation of the status of a, a Muslim minority in a non-Muslim society. A true Muslim should not associate with infidels. So you are physically here, but mentally, socially, religiously, you belong elsewhere. Now we found this message of segregation being taught at the most important mosque in the country. It's visited by world leaders and even has its own interfaith department, which organizes visits from government, the civil service, representatives of other religions, and thousands of British school children a year. The mosque says the aim of these visits is to promote understanding and respect between the communities. Our reporter is filming as some of the interfaith groups are brought into the women's area. So this is what we have in our heart. It's just On this occasion, Umamira meets them. God, let me know how to reach you. The way, the right way. On another occasion, a group of non-Muslims is invited to sit down with the circle. The preacher promotes Islam to them, but talks politely about other religions too. And, uh, and the message, the Quran, came to confirm the truth in the previous scriptures. But as soon as the interfaith group leaves, the same preacher's tone changes completely. She now says Christian teachings are vile. And we feel nothing sometimes going past the church. We don't look at it in disgust and think, subhanAllah, what are these people doing in there? What they say with their tongues is so vile and disgusting. It's an abomination. Like the other preachers in the circle, she says she's teaching from the works of the Saudi scholars. In this case, Sheikh bin Baz, a former Grand Mufti of the kingdom. The teachings include that a Muslim cannot be tolerant of other religions. He shouldn't just be indifferent and say things like, you go to church, you know, I go to the mosque, let's all stay together like one big happy family and all be united as humanity. This is false, this does not work, this concept is a lie, it's fake and it's a farce. The circle preaches for eight hours a day on Saturdays and Sundays. Any woman who goes there to pray is likely to hear their preaching. Our reporter is told the circle was set up years ago by Umar Mira. But while she's been in Saudi Arabia, it's been run by this woman, Umm Salim. She too preaches Saudi teachings. 
She says she's met a Muslim woman who is too friendly to non-Muslims. When she sees a Kafir woman, big smile. When she turns around, she sees me there. <laughs> yeah. It's part of Islam, of the aqid, of the correct belief that you, you love those who love Allah and that you hate those who hate Allah. Okay. Although the preachers say Muslims should act well with non-Muslims, in private they were often disparaging about their ways and beliefs. In two months at the mosque, we only recorded one incident of dissent. A worshipper sitting in the audience objects to the teachings on disbelievers, saying Islam encourages Muslims to mix with others. I mean, there is an ayah from Quran that says, you know, we made a few peoples, different shu'ub, to know one another. And if you communicate with the other and you show the beauty of Islam, then, you know, then maybe could, people could come into Islam. The preacher qualifies her statements a little. It doesn't mean that we should oppress them. It doesn't mean that we don't give the right, it doesn't mean that we don't, don't help them. Okay? But then returns to the main theme. But it doesn't mean as well that we should be friends then. Regent's Park Mosque was set up 60 years ago to represent British Muslims to the government. It says its role is to help Muslims integrate into British society. The Women's Circle does preach against terrorism, and doesn't incite Muslims to break British laws. But far from preaching integration, Umm Salim says Muslims cannot take British citizenship. Their loyalty is to Allah. There are some conditions that can take you into the kufr to take the British citizenship. And whether you like it or not, for these people you are selling your religion for. It's a very serious thing. It is not allowed, allowed to give allegiance to other than Allah. And another preacher says Muslims shouldn't live in Britain at all. Is that is not befitting for Muslims that he should reside in the land of evil, the land of the the, 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 the land of the disbelief. A Muslim should emigrate to a Muslim country. On Fridays, the women can hear the mosque sermons from the main hall. These sermons are given to a thousand or so worshippers by the mosque's official imams who by historical agreement have been supplied by the Egyptian government and are trained in Egypt. These sermons our reporter heard were very different from the women's circles teaching, stressing a tolerant and diverse Islam. But our reporter has found that upstairs, British women are being constantly exposed to hardline Saudi teachings. There are other links between Britain's central mosque and Saudi Arabia. It's been heavily funded by the kingdom and the mosque's director general is from Saudi Arabia. Dr. Ahmed Al Dubayan is the public face of the mosque and in overall control. I would like really to express our prayers, our condolences and so After the 7th of July bombings, he held a press conference there to condemn terrorism. And it is not accepted by the Muslim community. It's not accepted also by all means by the Islam itself as a faith and as a religion. Dr. Al Dubayan is not an imam. He's a Saudi diplomat. He's Islamic Affairs attaché to the Saudi Embassy in London and has full diplomatic immunity. Dr. Al Dubayan told us that some of the preachers, including Umm Amira, were unknown to him. He said Umm Salim had requested permission to be an authorized teacher at the mosque, but had been refused, as she did not supply references and written information about her teachings and views. He and the mosque had not known of her teachings and views, which did not reflect those of Regent's Park Mosque. He said, The ICC is committed to interfaith and cross-cultural understanding. It does not support or condone extreme views, racial hatred, violence or intolerance. Um Salim told us, We are not blind followers of any government or any clerics. We do criticize other religions just as other religions criticize Islam. However, this does not mean that we show intolerance, aggression or violence to people of different faiths. And we have often emphasized that the Muslim's attitude towards his or her non-Muslim counterpart is one of fairness, compassion and tolerance. We encourage integration into society. She said the comments that Muslims could not take British citizenship were erroneous and apologized for them. She said... Whilst it is recommended for a Muslim to migrate to a Muslim country, it is not obligatory. In last year's dispatches, 
we found the mosque's official bookshop was selling a number of speeches by preachers promoting hatred and intolerance. Yeah, fear. You're not if. The worst word that can ever be written! Dr. Al Dubayan told us the bookshop was independently run by a company called Darul Salam International Publications, a British company with links to Saudi Arabia. But he said he was seriously concerned and said that the DVDs had been removed immediately, pending an investigation. And he called on all British Muslim organizations to be vigilant about the message being spread on their premises, either during talks or on recorded DVDs. So our reporter went back to the bookshop and went to the same shelves to see if he had been as good as his word. But despite his promises, she found they're still selling the speeches of exactly the same preachers we identified last year. They're still selling DVDs of Mutaza Khan, a British school teacher and preacher. In this one, he attacks the Western idea that women can be independent from men. The mental capacity of this society teaches you, I'm a woman in my own right. I can get my own job, I can get my own funding, I can get my own welfare, I can get my own flat, I can get my own home, I can get my own state benefit. I don't need you in my life. What is that? Deception of the devil. And says men should control them. A man is stronger than women, but men today don't know how to take care of their families. That's why their women walk loose, their women speak loose. And that's their evil society, that Muslim society has become like that today. And they're still selling DVDs of Sheikh Faiz, who was trained to preach in a Saudi religious university, condemning disbelievers. Uh, the kafar are kafar. Who cares what they do? They do the most evil, filthy things. The disbelievers, the evil, wicked, mischievous people. Balak, you can see the evil in that face. Do not mix with people who do not prostrate to the oneness of Allah Ta'ala, who do not prostrate to the Almighty Lord. Keep far away from people like that. Last year we found DVDs of him calling Jews pigs who would be killed at the end of the world. In this new one from the bookshop, he is still condemning Jewish beliefs and Jews themselves. The leader of pride or arrogance are no other than the Jews. Wallahi, they've got the most extreme racial pride in them. 